news, events, sports. Same time, same place, right in the heart of Isla Vista. UCSB TV is serving UC Santa Barbara and the surrounding community with real journalism. Alexandra Goldberg here reporting in the UCSB TV studio. And after this summer hiatus, our team of reporters have a lot to catch you up on. Rival school Cal Poly San Luis Obispo headed to the Thunderdome last Friday to battle it out against UCSB women's volleyball. We covered UCSB's victory over Cal Poly and what some of the athletes had to say about the win post game. Up next, the UCSB housing crisis is now being handled at a county level after a recent lawsuit against UCSB by the Santa Barbara County Board of Supervisors over a lack of housing accommodations for students. We talked with students about facing the realities of finding housing for the school year and the price you pay to live in Isla Vista and the surrounding communities. But up first, we were joined by Eleanor Gartner, Public and Government Affairs Specialist at Cox Communications, about a recent incentive to take down all of the shoes you see dangling from power lines in Isla Vista to beautify the streets and mitigate the risks associated with this IV tradition. Reporting in the field today is reporter Priscilla Flores. Shoes flung onto the power lines in Isla Vista as a rite of passage for students at the end of the school year are being taken down by Cox in the Isla Vista Community Service District. This past summer, the Isla Vista Community Service District partnered with Cox for their Isla Vista Beautiful program to remove 341 pairs of shoes off of power lines. We got two of our guys to come, go out and take down hundreds of pairs of shoes down from the lines throughout IV. Our team was out there for hours over multiple days, and by the end of it, I think we had 341 pairs of shoes. I think it was over 585 pounds of shoes, which is a lot, um, but we're, again, eager to continue this partnership going forward. Once the shoes were taken off, they were donated to local shelters. Besides aesthetic, taking the shoes down was also a technical issue. So adding weight is not good for the power lines, it disrupts connectivity, and it also just in our effort and Ivy Beautiful's effort to make Isla Vista a more beautiful place to live and study for students, um, we just wanted to help overall to just improve the community in general. With 341 pairs of shoes removed from power lines last summer in Isla Vista, more still remain. Let's see what Cox has to say. We know this takes place every single spring going into summer, so we definitely are ready to go for next year and going forward too. While the power lines belong to Cox, the project would not have been completed without the Isla Vista Community Service District's beautification project. The Isla Vista Community Service District's main goal is to help clean up Isla Vista of trash, graffiti, and most recently, the shoes. I believe we live in such a beautiful area in Isla Vista, right next to the ocean, and there's so much wildlife, and it's a sensitive habitat. It's essentially trash sitting up there. We actually collected 585 pounds of shoes, and that had accumulated over one and a half years, a year and a half. The shoes we were able to donate were so appreciated by the people who needed them. So I just think it's important to bring awareness in that way, help people visualize the importance of donating the shoes rather than essentially littering them. So you're not leaving a lasting impact by throwing your shoes up there. You're not going to be able to come back in a few years from now and see them hanging there and be like, oh, look, that's those are my shoes because they will get taken down and most likely thrown away, maybe donated if they're still in good enough condition, but they won't last up there. So education and awareness is um, really what we're going to do to try to prevent this from happening as much. But it adds weight to the lines that could potentially touch other power lines or trees that could result in a fire. Um, so we just really want to encourage students to refrain from doing so and rather just to donate them to one of the many local nonprofits that we have in town. There is there's there is an organization that cares and we are looking out for these types of things and taking care of them. 
For many students living in Isla Vista, throwing a pair of shoes onto the power lines is a tradition, despite the myth that shoes on power lines meant illegal activity. I feel like it's kind of a good thing because it definitely cleans up the wires. Um, I just think that people are, are not going to stop tossing, tossing shoes on the wires, so I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make, but it's definitely a good effort. One day, me and my friends from home, uh, my friends and I, we bought this like 30-foot pole from Home Depot, and we were going around um, IV, and we were like, looking for really cool shoes that people had just thrown on. And we actually walked away with maybe like three or four pairs of like brand new white Air Forces and like some dope Reeboks, like some cool sneakers. So if you're ever in the market for new shoes uh, and you don't want to go spend the new shoe money, um, just take a look up and you'll probably see some, I promise you that. Cox and the Isla Vista Community Service District will continue with their biannual summer project to clean up the streets of Isla Vista and donate to the community. I'm Priscilla Flores with UCSB TV. We'll see you next time. That was Priscilla Flores in the field at Cox Communications talking about the removal of sneakers from power lines in IV. Up next, joining us from the Thunderdome is reporter Hannah Abergell providing some post-game insight from women's volleyball, UCSB versus Cal Poly. Hey Gauchos, Hannah here, your UCSB TV sports anchor. Last Friday, our UCSB women volleyball team had their blue-green rivalry against Cal Poly. Last year, they got defeated 3-1, and this year they won a 3-1 victory. I got the chance to speak with Denny Wilson. Here's what the player had to say. Hey Gauchos, Hannah Abigail here with Denny Wilson. We just had the blue-green rivalry here at the Thunderdome. It's been quite a game. All right, Denny, what has fueled your improvement since the conference has started this season? Yeah, I mean, I think our whole team just committed to our goal of winning the Big West this year, and we all made a huge commitment and lots of sacrifices towards that, and we all step in the gym every single day trying to get better, not making any excuses, and clearly it's showing on the court all our hard work. Totally. We can hear you from the sidelines, that communication, that chemistry. It's such a key value to win these games. How would you compare yourself and the team since the last first couple games to from, to, from last year to now? Yeah, I think last year we were maybe a little bit slower towards the end or towards the beginning and this year we're a lot better at just fighting throughout, staying steady and really executing our scout. Totally. You know, last year Cal Poly defeated you guys 3-1 and this year you defeated them 3-1. How does that feel? How does that win feel after a loss like that? It feels amazing. We got a ton of fans out tonight and lots of support and we really put up a fight so that was just an amazing game. I'm so happy we got a ton of people to watch. Yeah, and you killed it tonight. What do you think made you stronger this year? Um, I just felt really good today. I good. got some good sleep and was ready to ball out, give the people a show, and that's what I did. Do you think, <laughs> is that the key to win, the good sleep? The good sleep, yeah. <laughs> you just got to get some sleep yeah. and fuel your body and totally. show up ready to work. Yeah, totally. Coach challenged a play in the fourth set that led you guys to this victory. What would you say about that? How, how do you view your coach now after that. Yeah, I think that was a great move by her. I mean, just defending us. Totally. Like, we'll be honest with her too. You know, we won't right. lie to her if we'll touch if we touch stuff. But right. that was a great move and a great play that propelled us forward. You are so present on the court. What motivates you? What drives you to be so present and loud? Yeah, as team captain, I work really hard to just motivate and stay positive and inspire my team. So every time I go out there, that's my goal, to be loud, to be present, and do my job and influence others to do theirs as well. And that's what you're doing, and great job tonight. It's Thank been you. so much fun to be back here at the Thunderdome watching you, watching your team lead Thank this you. victory. I hope you have a great night, Danny. Keep Thank it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gauchos. We'll see you next week. And that was Danny Wilson with our UCSB women's volleyball team. I'm Hannah Abergell, your sports anchor for UCSB TV. On camera at the Thunderdome, that was Hannah Abergell at women's volleyball, UCSB versus Cal Poly. And up next, covering the UCSB housing crisis and recent lawsuit against UCSB by the Santa Barbara County Board of Supervisors, here's reporter Rebecca Hurtato Fairweather. My name is Rebecca Hortado Fairweather, and I'm your news anchor, and you're watching UCSB TV. On this week's story, UCSB was sued by the Santa Barbara Board of Supervisors for failure to uphold promises made to Santa Barbara County to provide adequate housing accommodations for its students. 
This comes only nine months after the city of Goleta so sued UCSB for damages to the city caused by the housing crisis, as well as the university's controversial plans to continue the development and construction of Munger Hall. The Munger proposal was set to be completed in 2025, but is now set for the summer of 2026, directly violating the 2010 Long Range Development Plan, which requires adequate number of beds for students by 2025. Many are calling the university's leadership into question as the housing crisis has gotten increasingly worse in recent years, amid decisions to enroll more students without building additional living accommodations. I sat down with Evan Parsons, a second year psychology major here at UC Santa Barbara. She struggled with finding housing, eventually getting off the wait list for undergraduate. Finding housing in Isla Vista is especially challenging for many students and some leases even require action a year in advance. In your search for housing, what were some things hindering you from securing an apartment or a house? So I was late to the game. So that was a little stressful because everybody had their spots. Friends that I was talking to about it already found rooms. And so it just was all on me to find people and reach out. So I joined like the Facebook like housing groups and constantly every single day I was looking for like new leasings, new offers, and I would text people as soon as I could. Um, I had some responses, but I felt like what held me back from finally securing my spot is that the people tend to ghost. Mm. And you would just like wouldn't hear like responses until like weeks later when they're like, oh, I already filled the spot or they would just completely stop texting in general. So that's why I feel like I'm a little bit more luckier to get offered university housing because majority of the people that I was in contact with ended up just stopped contacting mm. me. Many students have issued complaints regarding the upkeep and maintenance of their homes within Isla Vista, reporting issues with pests, appliance malfunctions, rodents. Many have come to comment on the exploitation of students in regard to pay their rent or management. Do you believe that the university has some responsibility in ensuring that students are living in livable conditions? Yeah, I do believe that there is a certain amount of responsibility that should take in order to make sure that their students are living in like livable conditions. Like, um, we all pay tuition to come here. I feel like they should make sure that it's safe for us out there almost. Munger Hall is another topic that is often brought up with the discussion to UCSB's housing crisis, specifically their architectural pursuits, such as hoping to implement windowless rooms and having eight people to one living space. Has the university's effort in combating the housing crisis, housing crisis, in your opinion, been sufficient? Are the students that are currently enrolled getting their needs met? I think that Munger Hall is a difficult topic to be discussed because I don't think it's such a great idea. I feel like eight people to one room is a little intense. I feel like even just like a quad is a lot to handle. There's a lot of personal spaces being invaded. So I don't think that the university is making that like one of the best options, like or like the best routes to take. I feel like there's other options that could be done like other things to be done differently but I mean it's better than living in a car or like staking with like a bike and being homeless so I feel like for now it's like a temporary like problem solver but in the long run I don't think that it's beneficial to the students that are enrolled. As the excitement of the new year begins to settle and we get comfortable in our classes the added stress of housing security unlivable conditions and inadequate assistance affects a large portion of the student population. We will continue to cover ongoing developments. With UCSB TV, I'm Rebecca Hurtado Fairweather. Alexandra Goldberg here with UCSB TV. All of the sports news and events you need to know all around Isla Vista. Same time, same place. We'll catch you next week.